Okay, so the main answer, <laughs> good, way to go. Um, no heat was transferred in this process. Heat transfers are between something at a high temperature and something at a low temperature. And they happen only because of the temperature difference. If something's hot, contact with something cold, my hand in contact with this thing, this thing is colder than my hand, my hand transfers heat to that thing. No other energy transfers, if, if they don't involve if they don't need temperature differences to happen, then you don't call them heat. In fact, you call them work. And so there is no heat transferred here. There's no heat transferred at all. We didn't put some, the, H, the uh, N2 gas, we said that thermal energy went down. So how would you get thermal energy to go down if you transferred heat? You would put the N2 gas in contact with something cold. We didn't do that, but E-thermal went down. So delta E-thermal is a negative number. And if Q is zero, then W has to be a negative number. W has to be less than zero. W less than zero. W is the work energy transferred in. If work energy was transferred out, if energy was transferred out and we call it work, then W is a negative number. Just like if heat energy is transferred out, then Q is a negative number. Remember how we defined heat capacity. We said, oh, I put in heat, I measure the amount of heat I put in, I'm going to divide by delta T. It tells you how much the temperature changed when you added heat to something. And if you remember, I also wrote it this way. Delta E total is Q plus W, you remember. And so at one point I had written that Q was delta E total minus W. So I just substituted that in and said, okay, well that's another set way to say heat capacity. Well, there's two ways to add two, I mean, there's an infinite number of ways to add heat to something, but there's two kind of special ones that we talk about. One is, I add heat at constant volume. So that's a little like leaving this, uh, like the leaving this top one, leaving the piston locked in place. That would be adding heat at constant volume. The gas's volume wouldn't change if I took that top one, forget this bottom picture right now. I took the top one, the piston is locked in place, I put a flame underneath it and I heat up the gas. I have to add heat, I would add it at constant volume and its temperature would go up. Thermal energy would go up if I did that. And the other fairly easy one to do is heat capacity at constant pressure. Add heat, let the pressure stay constant. How would I do that? Well, I would unlock this thing so the piston could move up and down. So now it would be right here maybe. And once I found it, now that the piston can move up and down freely, if that mass up on top of it is, uh, stays the same, so I don't change the mass around, then the mass will be supplying that constant pressure. It'll be pushing down all the time with the same force, with the same pressure. And so that would be heat capacity at constant pressure. With this thing movable up and down, I would add heat and divide by the temperature change. 
So uh, my, my first question, and I, and I think you know the answer to this one, if for constant pressure, suppose I add heat at constant pressure, what happens to the volume? This thing can move up and down. Does it stay there? Does it move up? Or does it move down? If I add heat to the gas, how many four it stays there where it is exactly? How many four it moves down? How many say it moves up? Okay, I thought you would know that one. You add heat to this, thermal energy goes up, temperature goes up. If it's constant pressure, well, you know how temperature and pressure are, are related. If it's constant pressure and the temperature goes up, then the volume is going to have to go up. We'll get to that in a second, but you know the ideal gas law. So the volume of this thing has to go up. You, you know it from, from the ideal gas law. You also know it from your own experience, I think. <laughs> so my quick clicker question for you do you add more heat at constant V or at constant P for same delta T? That's my clicker question for you. Do you add more heat at constant pressure? Constant pressure is like this one. You add heat and the piston rises. This one, you add heat and the piston doesn't rise because it's at constant volume. So it's locked in place and so the volume doesn't change. So given what we've, what we've talked about and that heat capacity tells you how much heat you have to add to get a temperature change and the heat is delta E total minus W. I'll give you a minute and a half or two minutes. Do you have to add more heat at constant volume or at constant pressure? <laughs> 